it's a pleasure to talk about our recent article that and that uh, highlights uh, the importance of sex and sex steroids, i.e., sex hormones in lung diseases, particularly asthma and COPD and pulmonary fibrosis. My name is Y.S. Prakash. I am an anesthesiologist and a lung researcher at the Mayo Clinic in Rochester, Minnesota. Thank you for paying attention to this video recording that talks briefly about a new article titled Sex, Cells, and Asthma that's to be published in the July issue of the Mayo Clinic Proceedings in 2021. Sex cells, but sex is an important aspect of lung diseases. And this is what we wanna highlight via this article. What is, what is sex and why is that important for asthma? Well, it turns out that men and women are different, if you didn't already know that, but also for lung diseases. And it turns out that asthma in men versus asthma in women are different. Asthma in boys versus asthma in girls are different. There are huge changes in asthma as boys and girls go through puberty. There are differences in asthma as women undergo pregnancy or near menopause or postmenopausally. Older men and older women have different types of asthma compared to younger men or younger women. And one of the other things that we are discovering is that asthma in obese patients, be it men or women, is also different. And therefore, understanding how sex affects asthma or sex hormones, estrogen, progesterone, testosterone, how they influence asthma is becoming an important but not completely understood aspect of understanding lung diseases such as asthma and treating them. And so what we want to do via this uh, article in Mayo Clinic Proceedings is to highlight what is the current state of understanding of asthma in men versus women, as well as in, let's say, uh, obese patients, and figure out if there are particular markers of asthma in men versus women that we can use to our advantage to treat men with asthma versus women in asthma differently, or boys or girls with asthma differently, because that would make it extremely convenient for clinicians, but also for researchers to see men versus women differently when it comes to lung diseases and individualize their treatments in a novel way that hasn't really been done before. That's the fundamental takeaway message that we want to sort of provide via this article. So what do we understand so far in terms of asthma in men versus women? Turns out women are born with an advantage when it comes to lung diseases. In general, girls are born so that their lungs relative to their body size are built such that they should have less asthma. So it turns out actually that boys have more asthma than girls and so therefore girls pre-puberty girls are protected. Yet, just around the time of puberty, there's a change. Women start to get more asthma than adult men. And that's true throughout the rest of their lives until menopause or so. And so there must be something different that occurs at puberty and after puberty in adulthood, where women tend to have more asthma, more severe asthma, and are relatively more resistant to current therapies such as steroids and other drugs that we use for asthma. It becomes uh, critical towards treating women with asthma differently than treating men with asthma. But it turns out that it's not as simple as, it, as we thought it was. We wish it were, but it's not. It turns out that it's not just the immune cells or the inflammation that we classically associate with asthma that are differently affected by hormones in women, the estrogens and progesterone, but also the cells of the lung that are involved in producing bronchoconstriction and bronchodilation, the tightness that, that one feels when, when one has asthma. Those are all influenced differently by sex hormones, particularly estrogens. And so we, what we are trying to do via this article is to highlight how different immune cells and different cells of, of the lung react differently 
two estrogen versus progesterone versus testosterone. Of course, I want to highlight that we really don't understand all of it because we haven't done enough research on it. And that's one of the other highlights and takeaway messages of this article is that we do need to do more research. But fundamentally, I think the, what we are understanding from the data so far in humans, as well as in animal models and cells and other aspects of research that we use to understand asthma, is that immune cells and inflammation tends to go up with uh, female sex hormones, such as estrogens in particular, we don't necessarily understand what happens with progesterone. While testosterone tends to have a protective role. And therefore, it's possible that while girls are born ad advantaged towards not getting as much asthma, as they become women, the female sex hormones tend to put them at a somewhat of a disadvantage and make them more asthmatic. Does that mean that we need to inhibit female sex hormones? Well, that's kind of hard to do because that's an important aspect of women's lives. Therefore, what we want to understand is, is there are specific aspects of the immune cells or the inflammation of asthma that are different in women that we can target? And there are some, as we have identified in the article, and there are some certain uh, immune cell types that are also differently affected. And via this article, we want to highlight some of those uh, inflammatory cytokines and inflammatory cell types that we could potentially target using novel drugs that are actually in being tested for asthma and other diseases. So that's one major aspect. The other aspect that we also highlight via this is asthma and obesity, um, which is a fundamentally different being. Uh, but as some of you may know, uh, obese patients tend to also have uh, differences, especially with female patients, differences in uh, their female sex hormone levels or their effects uh, on, on tissues. And what we want to understand via this article is to say that it, if female sex hormones are differently expressed or different levels or react differently or affect cells of the lung differently, then maybe we need to look at obese asthmatic patients in a different light. And the therapies that we currently use for all asthmatics may or may not be as effective in obese patients, because as many of you know, obesity is a growing epidemic in this country, if not the world. And if we can understand how obese asthma is different, and especially in women, then perhaps we can, not only can we treat obese asthmatics differently, but also obese women versus obese men. We hope you will enjoy our article in Mayo Clinic Proceedings called Sex, Cells, and Asthma. We invite you to read it and think about asthma differently. Think about men versus women differently. Think about our obese patients differently. And we hope that as time goes by, we learn new things and that we can come back to you with even better understanding of asthma in men versus women and how we can treat them differently. And that's what Mayo Clinic is all about. Thank you. We hope you found this presentation from the content of our website valuable. Our journal's mission is to promote the best interests of patients by advancing the knowledge and professionalism of the physician community. If you are interested in more information about us, our homepage is www.mayoclinicproceedings.org. There you'll find access to information for our social media content, such as additional videos on our YouTube channel or journal updates on Facebook. You can also follow us on Twitter. More information about Healthcare at Mayo Clinic is available at www.mayoclinic.org. This video content is copyrighted by Mayo Foundation for Medical Education and Research.